Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. We thank God for his goodness, his kindness, and his tender mercy, and all of his bountiful and wondrous blessings he has stored upon us. And even the way he to do, be still. We thank God for the Lord and Savior. We thank him for his goodness and his kindness. Tonight we will come from, we we'll start a new chapter. From uh, Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. Revelation chapter 7, verses 1 and 2. Uh, the title of this will be uh, The Seal of Israel. The Seal of Israel. Let's pray. Most gracious and all God's Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your tender mercy, and all of your bountiful and wondrous blessings you have stored upon us, and even what you yet to do, we thank you. We pray you that everything be done and said this evening will bring you glory and bring you honor. Every way tonight, every way tonight that we be blessed. And as we learn together, we will grow together. As we learn and grow together, we be the people you're calling for in these lives and evil days, God. Help us, God. Have us be the people of confidence, last and in time. Oh God, I ask that you be with me, speak to me, speak to me. Give me freshness of word and clarity of word, fresh revelation and fresh understanding of your word. Reveal your word is tonight, God, as only you can do. And you be glorified and you be honored. In Jesus' name I pray and I do thank you. Amen. Amen. Sister Brooks, if you go ahead and we'll look at this seventh chapter of Revelation, chapter one, and, uh, chapter seven, and one, and verses one and two. She be reading from the King James version, and then I will follow behind her with the New King James and come back and expound from the King James. After these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Okay. Thank you so much. Let's read. There's some nuggets here. Let me read the new key things first. And after these things, I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth nor the sea. Nor on tree or any tree. I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Hmm. King James, let's go there. And after, first of all, he says, and after. As we see this vision in chapter 7, he switches from chapter 6 to chapter 7. And that's why he starts off, he says, and after these. He talked about it, just a, a short synopsis at the end of chapter 6. He talks about how that they wanted the mountains and rocks to fall on him and all this, those things. And he sees all this in a vision. He said, that after these, after these uh, events, I'm going to bring you, and that's, that's his word, and I'm going to bring you to a new event. <laughs> in chapter 7, I'm going to bring you to a new event. And after these things, I saw four <coughs> angels standing on the four corners of the earth. Let me stop right there. Standing on the four corners of the earth. The question I want to ask us tonight is he literally talking about four corners or is he talking about something else? And if he's talking about something else, what is he talking about? Because if you 
see it there. And I'm going to find, you'll see it in, 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 the, in the King James, the New King James, uh, uh, New Living Translation, also in the, uh, the NIV. You see all these versions or translations speaking of four corners. But is he literally in the vision talking about the earth being of these four corners? I'm bring up some ge geographic stuff here in a moment. Or is he talking about something else? It's just a reason for him. The way I think of it, now that's probably wrong, but it's like he's talking I saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth. See the earth? Because it says four corners. When you look at four corners, it looks like it's a square. But is he literally speaking in the vision in that term? Or is he speaking in another term? And, 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 and as you said what you said, and what Lisa said what she said, by looking at it like that, it could presumably lead us to four points. I'm going to show you something in a minute. And I can't remember doing this geographic, but I did not do like that class. Didn't do well at any, but I still remember some of it. <laughs> Uh, anybody else have, have, have a, a thought in, in regards to this when John sees the vision of four corners? Okay. Nobody else. First of all, the earth, look at the earth, the earth in general is round. When I was in school, X number years ago, I won't say yesterday, but I'm in church. X number of years ago, they said the earth was round and on its axle. Mm -hmm. So if the earth is round, how can it be square? <laughs> I'm just going to that. And before I go any further with that, let me, let me do this. In chapter 7, John records two visions during the interlude between the sixth and the seventh seal. After these things means after the vision that accompanied the opening of the first six seals. Watch this. In the first, these, these visions, John saw a four angel standing on the four corners of the earth. Watch this. Powerful. No, I don't want to do that yet. I want to stop the power. I don't mind that yet. I ain't that yet. But let me, let me go back to, to, to the earth being round. The four corners of the earth does not mean the Bible indicates the earth is a square. Just because it says four corners 
does not mean that it, the Bible indica indicating that the earth has four corners or, or is a square. Watch this. The book of Job reminds us that God hung the earth on nothing. Job 26 and 7. You will find it in Job 26 and 7. Isaiah saw the Lord say above, watch this, this is, Isaiah saw <laughs> the Lord sitting above the circle or the sphere of the earth. Circle, circle, circle of the earth. Isaiah 40 and 22. That's where you see that at. Even today, people speak of the four corners of the earth. And I'm going to tell you something. I said, I read this, and I, I may have to change what I used to do or say, rather, not what I used to do, what I used to say. <laughs> and maybe not, may I think about it. Uh, meaning the four, watch this for When he speaks, when, the, when he talks about it, he speaks of the four corners of the earth, it really means the four directions of the earth. Not, the four, not so much the, 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 the east, what is it? Yeah, the east, the west, the north, which is really not square. <laughs> because north is up and south is down. And if you let, I just thought about something. Watch what I just did. East, west, north, I mean south, and north. So therefore, that, that, that is something uh, can be exhibited because it's not a square. It's more of a T or a cross. <laughs> and so he, he makes it known that in the division, it's not so much the earth is square, it's in four different directions of the earth. <laughs> Let's go further. Uh, meaning four different directions of the earth, pointing a view of the surface of the earth, just as four winds are, watch this, watch this, this gives you the same indication, just as the four winds are the winds that come from four different directions. <laughs> he, he, he applies that just like that. As you have four winds coming from four different directions, same way these Angels coming from four different directions. <laughs> but let's go deeper though. If we look at this. The next person on the earth the, that he says, watch this, listen to this. Holding the four winds of the earth. Holding the four winds of the earth. Meaning stopping the wind from blowing. <laughs> watch the rest of this. That the wind should not blow on the earth or the land, nor the sea, nor any tree. They are, hold, they are holding back the wind from even the wind blowing the trees. These angels are very powerful. But we're going to get two in a minute, but I'm going to take myself ahead and say, these angels who hold back the wind from all four directions have an assignment. And I really can't get into it because it's going to take me to next week's. They're, they're, holding, they're, they're, they're holding back the wind for a purpose. I, I'm you just, 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 just put this on your mind. They're holding back the winds for a purpose. And all the power that has been given them to hold back the wind, it, it is for a purpose. Watch this. Won't blow. Won't blow no wind. Catch this. <laughs> John saw four angels standing on the four corners of the earth, or directions of the earth, 
powerful, holding back four winds of the earth. They progressed, they prevent, or they prevented any stormy wind from blowing. Watch this, destructively. <laughs> destructively. Amen. At this point, they're holding back the stormy winds from the destructiveness <laughs> of the earth, the sea, and or any tree. This was what's the question? This is this catch this. This was the coming before the storm. This was the coming mm -hmm. before the storm. Meaning there is coming a storm. <laughs> but at this particular time, these four angels were holy back the wind, the stormy wind before the calm. <laughs> or oh, before the storm, rather, before the storm, the calm before the storm. Anybody have any, any add-ons to, to this? Yes, ma'am. I have never thought of wind stopping on the sea. You know, or is it like the, it's like the earth breathes breath of God almost. Like there's always wind. If it stops, it, mm -hmm. that would feel like, I don't know, that's such an odd thing to actually think about happening. And it, it, it is odd to the reason at this point. As we get into a little bit more in chapter 7, it won't be odd. It will be purpose for the whole thing. Right. Of the wind. Now, they have a purpose, but they're holding back the purpose for a reason. And for a good reason. And I wish I would take us to the next thing, but I can't. I'm going to stay with the text. <laughs> I was talking about my, my teacher told me, he said, stay with the text. Don't fear. Stay with the text. You did a good record, you can take people to another place, and they'd be wondering. <laughs> so I'm going to stay with the text. So if, if, any other questions on verse number one or Adam? Yes, ma'am. Almost similar purpose. Yeah, yeah. yeah those, those good. Those good. Those good. Uh, anybody else got an L? 
Read it. But did anybody else want one? I'm sure you have something here. Okay. Oh, well, okay. Let Sister Brooks read. Listen, listen to what the NIV says. If you would be so kind of reading the NIV, please. The NIV says, Then I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding back the four winds from blowing upon the earth. Now the leaf rustled in the tree, and the sea became as smooth as glass. And I saw another angel coming from the east. Hold on, are you, are you reading the, don't, don't read the second yet. No, don't read the second yet. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. But did y'all catch? Not the leaf. That, not even the leaf. Russell or moon. There was such a calmness at this point. Such calmness at this point. And I like it because it illustrated not even a leaf, meaning one, even moved at this point. Wow. Okay, let's go to two. <laughs> Verse two says, And I saw another angel ascending from the east. Now wait a minute, I want to ask you a question. This says, John says, in the vision I saw another, I saw four, now I see a fifth one ascending from the east. What does the word ascending mean? Hmm? Going up. Coming up from the east. <laughs> he sees this angel from the east going up. But watch the rest of the text. Having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels. To whom it was listened to. To whom he was given to hurt the earth and the sea. I just told y'all, they have purpose. I, I'm not going to again. I'm not going to take myself ahead of myself yet. But I want to deal with this angel he saw, this fifth angel he saw, that ascended, that right with rise or raised from the east. My question to the text is. Why? Or what was the purpose of this angel ascending, the fifth one, ascending from the east? What is the purpose of the east? What is the significance of the east? Opposing any other way. Well, let's dig. Next, John saw another, a fifth angel, rising. Up or ascending from the rising, what's it? The rising of the sun. That is from the east. Let's go further. He carried the seal of the living God. He called out urgently, not only urgently, but loudly to the four angels. Watch this. To whom was given the responsibility. To endure or harm or, day or damage the earth and the sea. Listen to this. Watch this. Watch this. I told you they had purpose. These angels have purpose. There's a calm right now. There's not even a leaf moving right now. But they have purpose. They're responsibility. Listen to this. Damage the earth and the sea as part of God's divine judgment. 
You know she says in the King James, hurt the earth <laughs> and see. Literally, he said, destroy the earth and the sea. Does anybody know why he's going to destroy the earth and the sea? Anyone know? Well, I'm going to take out of heaven myself. Because as you get into Revelation, he said there's going to be a new earth yeah. and a new heaven. So if there's going to be a new, you have to get rid of the old. <laughs> Watch this. When they do what they got to do, when the time comes, what they got to do, they're going to destroy the earth, they're going to destroy the sea, and going to start from scratch. And all the evil stuff that's existing now will no longer exist. The earth will be, will be like God had intended from the beginning. But he got to destroy the earth, the old stuff, so he put it in new. Now watch this. These angels, these four angels, were messengers. But watch this. They were messengers of doom. These four angels were messengers of, messengers of doom. Because you see it right here in verse 2. It says, hurt the earth and the sea. Literally means destroy the earth and the sea. <laughs> All along with, I want to take this to the next part so bad. To do. I'm, I'm just wondering um, hold on I gotta think this out better because you go in and I'll go I'm not ready yet okay Miss Mary the east part uh, angel represented the blessings the blessings of God and so we wasn't supposed to hold on until the 444,000, uh, that the 144,000 is not about to go through that. You know what I'm saying? I do. They're not supposed to go through that. But these other angels that was at the beginning, that for the four corners, mm -hmm. they are the ones that deal with it. They just want to stop the wind from the earth. You know, on As we get into it, it's going to be more than 144,000. Yeah. As we get to it, it's going to be more than man can number. <laughs> it's going to escalate. Oh, well, you got me now. I'm going to do it now. Until the number gets to the number that God has, mm -hmm. there will not be a destroyer of the earth. And that's why, wait, well, see, I'll take it down. I'm going to just walk it in now. I'm walking in the door. That's why the earth cannot be destroyed yet. Until God has known. <laughs> Watch this. God gives us chance and opportunity to get right. These angels, these four are angels, messengers of doom, but he's holding back them from destroying the earth and the sea at this present time. For the saints. <laughs> but once that happens, he's going to destroy it. Yes. But, but, but let, let me go back to what Mr. Mary said. This 144,000, we'll see the next few verses shortly to get there. But as, he, as we get there, he goes, watch this 144,000 start to escalate. When I was thinking, speaking of escalate, it will start to grow. Yeah. And it will, it will grow astronomically. <laughs> and we get to it where it says, when John says, as I saw this, that there was a number that no man can know. 
Let me go this way. Man who has all the mathematical knowledge and who can count, he'll run out of numbers. <laughs> oh my goodness. Watch this. Let me go back to what Mr. Brown said. Because he comes, this, this thing comes from the east to bless. He comes from the east, but he also comes with purpose to him. He holds the seal of the living God with him. Let's deal with that for a minute. Let me deal with this east for a moment. Solomon's temple faced the east. Now, as I read this and I've read this, there's something about the east. The least can understand and suggest to us that it's a blessing from the east. There is blessing from the east. So Solomon's temple faced the east. The word orient means east so that the proper orientation originally meant facing the east. Proper orientation for the Israelites, however, was to, what this is, was proper orientation for the Israelites, however, was to face the west toward the holy of holies. As they enter the temple court, now catch what I just said. The west, as they enter the temple of the Holy of Holies, the watch one I'm going to tell you next. Watch this. Nevertheless, Ezekiel saw the glory of the Lord departing from the temple. <laughs> departing from the temple by way of Mount of Olives on the east. And you'll find that in Ezekiel chapter 11, verse 23. Listen to this. In latter versions, he saw the glory <laughs> return from the way of the east. Ezekiel 43 and 2. In comparison, Zechariah 14 and 4. In view of, of this, it seems appropriate that the fifth angel came from the east. <laughs> appropriate. He came from the east. But let's deal with having the seal of the living God. The seal was a signet that stamped, listen to this, that stamped or impress a mark of something. Almost like a, a, a notary seal. I think y'all had a notary seal. It's like that. Watch this. A seal on something was a sign or a stamp. This is of approval. Of approval. Or identification. A seal confirmed attested, certified, and uh, authenticated, thus assuring its ownership and the genuineness and sometimes its destination. The seal was often stamped in clay or wax on the outside of an envelope, a package, or a scroll. <laughs> it was not something, this is this, it was not something that in itself could not be broken, but it bore the mark of its owner, and therefore it was his authority that made it secure. God's authority. Or the angel, the, the angel that God sent showed his, his authority. <laughs> Why? I'll show you in a minute. The seal or signet in verse 2 was a seal of the living God. This seal was a seal of the living God. He was holding the seal of the true and living God. Mm. Look, watch this. And there is no higher authority. <laughs> no higher authority. So those who were sealed 
when identified as belonging with women. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. I will say it again. So, those who were sealed, catch what I just said, those who were sealed were identified as belonging to him and under his care and protection. That's us. We, this seal is us. And we have been approved and identified with him and belonging to him for his care and protection. Mm. <laughs> and I'll close with this. Then because this angel bore the seal, he had authority to give. Wait a minute. He had authority. This angel comes from the east, has authority <laughs> to give command to the other four who are holding back the wind. Yes, ma'am. Who was that fifth angel? <laughs> huh? I saw another angel. Who is that? <laughs> Good answer. She, she, she asked the question, she really answered it, y'all. <laughs> this is an angel. Catch, catch this, catch this, catch this. Oh, oh man, you were good, good, good observation. Because he's the only one that had the Bible. Oh, yeah. Was the angel, was the Lamb of Christ, the Lamb of Christ, who had the authority, who had the approval, who had the power to command the four angels. Wait a minute, not yet. <laughs> yes, ma'am. If I can ask you. That's correct. I'm going back to you. I don't know. Okay, not. Because we, we should. We should not be allowed a chance to repent this time. And now, or that is. But if it's going to fall. It's going to be harder for them. But then, here's the deal they're not going to make it in. Uh, and I'll, when we get down there, we're going to see that. We're going to see that. They will not make it in. Because what they did, they caved in and took the mark of the beast. Watch it, to save themselves in the natural. But in the spirit realm, they don't save themselves. They don't make it in. <laughs> Woo! Woo, this is good, y'all. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Yes. Note, leave the lesson, but then in verse 2, mm -hmm. angel number 5 mm -hmm. has, is the only angel that has the authority to give the other four angels. Is that correct? Or is it yes. that? Yeah. That's correct. So that angel is. Who is that angel? I just said it. No, it's the Lamb of Christ. Yes. He's the only one can tell these, these, these four angels. Oh. This is what he said. He says, having the seal of the living God, yeah. he cried. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. Hold on a second. He cried with that loud voice to the four angels. To the four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea. Who is going to hold the seal of the living God but the, but the Lamb? Who is going to be entrusted to carry the seal of the living God? Who else going to Who is qualified? To carry the, 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 the seal of the living God. Yes, sir.
Okay, watch this. Watch this. And then when you, the, the new living trust, the new, 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 uh, 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 new American Center. It's got lowercase h. Watch this. King James, that's lowercase h. Hold on, don't, don't do that yet. <laughs> the new King James has lowercase h. But watch what the NIV has. You got the NIV? It is a capital H. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Which translation you got? I have um, Smack the Student Life Application. Okay. okay. <laughs> but, but it does, and he shall be. Is it capital H? Yeah. Okay. Let me, let, me do, let me do the NIV. Because the NIV, and I'm, I'm going to read it and I'm going to stop. I'll show you something. Then I saw another angel coming from the east, have the seal of the living God, period. Now the next sentence is this, he, capital H, called out in a loud voice to the four angels who had been given power to harm the land and the sea. Think about it, y'all. Who is God going to give? This, the living God. I ain't talking about the little G of God. Yeah. The living God. Who's he going to be entrusted with the city? <laughs> uh huh. And would it be correct because uh, of either um, when the translation is up there? King James. You said having the seal of the living God up there has a, what's that, colon? Yes. Even semicolon, it's a continuation of, of that sentence. sentence. Even if you got a comma, it's a continuation of the sentence. Yes. Then, then it doesn't stop. With this translation, it doesn't stop there. You go into the NIV, it stops there. And then continues with him with the bottom voice. Yes. Observation, but literally think about it. Literally think about it. <laughs> Who has authority? Listen to this, as I just read. Who has higher authority to hold the seal of the living God? Chapter 6, verse 1.
So those who were sealed, and this is talking about us now, who's going to hold the seal, y'all? Yeah. When you talk about us, mm -hmm. you got your hand up? Yeah. It okay. says God places his own seal on his followers. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yes. I'm, 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 I'm going to do this again. So those who were sealed were identified as belonging to him. And the him is capital H. Mm -hmm. Meaning God. Mm -hmm. And under his care and protection. Ascended from the direction of the rising of the sun. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why each other? <laughs> yes, exactly. Listen to this. He ascended from the rising of the direction of the sun. Watch this. I'm right. Who gonna who gonna come from the who gonna come from the east? Who gonna come from the who gonna come from the rise of the sun? Nowhere but Jesus. The Lamb. Mm -hmm. The Lamb. Mm -hmm. Watch this. The seal can't be broken. It's right there. It can't be broken. It can't be broken. But I want to show you all something. This, a seal confirmed, attested, certified, and authenticated, thus the ass assuring its ownership and genuineness and sometimes its doubt Destination. This is going back to, to what I talked about uh, a notary. You got that seal. And notarizing the authentication of the paper. And when you notarize something, you notarize a signature. You are notarizing while they're in front of you. Watch them, while they're in front of you, you watch them sign that document, and you notarize that doc the document is authentic or is authentication of that document through that notary. <laughs> yes, ma'am. So, in verse 1, where the four angels are open everything, uh -huh. Notice, notice this. Chapter, I mean, verse 1 tells them that they're holding back the wind mm -hmm. from the earth, mm -hmm. the sea, and the trees. Mm -hmm. Verse 2 tells them with their purpose of what their, their purpose for coming. Mm -hmm. They're going to do harm to the earth and the sea. Mm -hmm. Harm means they're going to destroy the earth and the sea. This fifth angel describes who uh, or the purpose of these four angels. Yeah. <laughs> what angel has authority?
questions. You remember Jacob wrestling? Mm -hmm. Who did he wrestle with? Who was the angel? Who was the angel? Exactly. The Bible tells us it's an angel. But literally, it's God. He's wrestling with. And if you look at the, 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 the dialogue of that in Genesis, he says, you have prevailed. <laughs> and so your name, since you have prevailed, your name is no longer, who can change your name but God? <laughs> he says, your name is no longer Jacob, but it is Israel. You have prevailed with man and who? Now hold on somebody. <laughs> and I, I think it's Genesis 32, we talk about the rest. The Bible says angel. But literally it's God. You want to do research, it's literally God. He's wrestling with it. He wrestled his soul to be with greater than another day. He wrestled his soul, he took his 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 hip out of socket, out of joint. And watch this. This is what preached though. We're going to talk about this for a second. In hopes that when his hip was out of joint, he would let go. Mm -hmm. But catch what he said. Mm -hmm. Even though I got a limp, yeah. I'm not letting go until you bless me. Mm -hmm. yeah. that's, a, that's, that's to all of us. Whatever we're going through, hold on to God. Because there is a blessing on the way. And the enemy wants to distract us from holding on and stop holding on. When all this distraction happens, when all this stuff happens in our lives, but Jacob gives us a prime example that if you hold on, God will bless you. And if you hold on, even in, in, in circumstances and in stuff that looks bad and even, even uh, affects you, what's this, mentally or physically. But if you hold on and have a determined mind, God will bless you. He blessed Jacob with a new name. Because your old name was corrupt. Your old name represented trickery. Trickster. Mm -hmm. But your new name means prevail. You have prevailed against God and man because you held on. And you did not let the circumstances and the situation of your hip being on the joint to stop you from holding on. He said, I am not going to let go until you bless me. All night long, we wrestle. I ain't letting go. Feel weak, but I ain't letting go. Tar, but I ain't letting go. For I get up and I let go. Because I came, watch this, I, I, I'm here for purpose. <laughs> to be blessed. And I, I'm going to hang on in here until my blessing comes. Yes. Anybody else? I'm here for a moment. Yes. Yes. Because your holding on determination was changed. Yes. He was no longer the Jacob of old. <laughs> he was holding on was the Jacob of new. <laughs> yes. Yes. Anybody else? Yes, ma'am. I'm going to heaven. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, 
kill me, but it's all right, I'm going to heaven. But if I denounce God, I'm not going to heaven. And that's what's going to happen in the, in the, in the last time, which is after, after, if I'm not mistaken, after we, the rapture, this is going to happen. People are going to die, can't die, and they're going to, they're going to take that mark of the beast. The 666. <laughs> yes. We, we, we're going to get into that real quick. Yes. But next week, we'll look at three and four. Next we're going to look at three and four. Uh, and it's going to really talk about why I didn't win it, bro, either. Yeah. <laughs> In the next two verses. But I, I want to, really, really, I want to slow walk this. I want to turn this thing real fast. I want us to get this, these scriptures, these verses into our spirits. Uh, to where we can uh, uh, gravitate to it. And to gravitate to it, we can grow from it. In a mighty and awesome way. I make a prayer request. Yes, sir. Who did? Okay. For good Christ, Brian? Okay. Yes, I saw it today. Yeah, the Boom family. Yes, yes. Um, I got two phone calls yesterday. I, a lot of y'all may not know. There's a lady who she belonged to inside the church. Her name was Vivian. Uh, she was in an auto accident several months ago. She passed yesterday morning. Got a call yesterday again. Uh, remember, I asked y'all to pray for the uh, Patsy that was going to my first church, I was Shepherd. She passed yesterday morning, too. Uh, so we're going to pray for that family. Uh, yeah, we'll pray for that family. Yes. Uh, uh, any, any others? Most gracious and all wise Father, we thank you for your goodness, your kindness, your tender mercy, and all of your bounty for the wondrous blessings you have stored upon us, and even what you are yet to do. We thank you. We thank you for the lesson this evening, God. Help us continue to grow from your word and draw closer to you, God. This book of Revelation is to me personally, God, has drawn me closer to you as we see in the, the vision that you had given John of things that are forthcoming and even that are happening today has drawn me closer to you. And I sort of pray, God, that it has drawn those who are following us in this book of Revelations has drawn them closer to you, God, and that they will get a, a, a greater greater relationship or have a greater relationship with you. Bless the mighty by the way. I pray God you'll bless God the names we're going before us. You bless uh, Tina McLean. You touch her and bless her in the name of Jesus. Move by your mighty hand and move by your mighty power. You know she stands in need of God. Move in an awesome and mighty way God. Uh, bless the, uh, the other person Mr. Brenda asked for prayer for uh, I pray you bless that person, God. Touch her body with your mighty hand of healing. You are the great physician. You are El, uh, uh, El uh, you are Rafa. So that means you are restorer of health. Oh, God, restore her health. Restore uh, Arthur Smith's health. Restore his health as well. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Bless Brother Clarence Brown as he goes into surgery on tomorrow. Guide the hands of the surgeon. Oh God, I pray that you'll 
uh, will certainly be successful. His recovery shall spring forth speedily, God. Oh, God, I pray you bless the joys. Uh, strengthen her and hold her up as well, God. Uh, bless her by an abundant way, God. I pray, God, you bless, God, the family of Vivian, God. You will comfort that family. You will reach where no one reach, and you touch where no one can touch. You do as only you can do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Not only bless the family of Vivian, but bless the family of Patsy White. Give comfort and give strength. You reach where no one can reach and you touch where no one can touch. You do as only you can do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And God, I pray not only those bereaved families, bereaved families everywhere, give comfort and give strength. You reach where no one can reach and you touch where no one can touch. You do as only you can do. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And God, I pray, God, that you will bless them from the service on Sunday morning. You meet everything you've done and said. They will bring you honor and bring you glory. Have your way in this place. That we be blessed, we be strengthened, and we be uplifted and encouraged, God. Set to the room with your anointing for your presence and your Shekinah glory. Have your way, have your way, have your way in this place, God. Oh, God, I pray you destroy every yoke, put it in a stronghold, God. Move by your mighty hand and move by your mighty power. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus. Go at, up and down every aisle, every pew and anoint. Bring transformation, God. Bring change, God, the heart, mind, God. In the worship of the experience, God. Every song will be sung, be sung for your glory and your honor. To exalt you and lift you up, God. In the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I pray as you to leave your house and go our various ways in every vehicle. Bind every mechanical problem. Dispatch your angels. Round up with your people. Cover us with your blood, God. Cover us with your blood, God. And we pray to God and praise God. These blessings we ask in Jesus' name. I pray and I do thank you. Amen. Amen. Before I close, I want to make mention of Mr. Mary will be preaching the fifth Sunday, youth day, uh, 11 a.m. Mr. Mary Walker will be preaching on that Sunday morning. That's your prayers for her. The Lord will bless her and be with her, speak to her as she speaks to us. <laughs> bless seems to be upon her. All right. That being all, remember, next week we'll look at verses 3 and 4. God bless you. God keep you. This is our prayer. Until next time, we'll say the same blessings.